You know, we've been talking about this and it all seems to be brewing. Uh, tell us first what it looks like Mueller is looking into. Well, the company has told us earlier this year about these these so-called information campaigns, information operations that uh, people in the global community have done on Facebook, pretending to be Americans, for example, when they're not, um, setting up fake accounts, uh, advertising through those, through those accounts and pages to try to promote messages that cause some sort of dissent in the U.S. political community. What Mueller wants to know is, is did this have a direct relationship to the election? Uh, were some of Trump's uh, associates associated with the people who did this? So there are a lot of details to dig into, and, and it'll be really interesting to see just how transparent Facebook is going to be willing to be. Yeah, Sarah, I mean, what does Facebook need to do from here? Well, legally, not that much. As, as it stands, digital properties are not held up to the same transparency standards as, say, television, where you know we can see in the public forum every ad that's been run in a campaign. So, what uh, what Facebook needs to do is is you know they say they're working with invest investigators. Um, the question is, where were these ads geographically targeted? What did they look like? Um, how, how far did that $100,000 go in terms of reaching potential voters? Did it happen in swing states? Did it happen in very important demographics? So uh, there are a lot of questions to answer. And then, of course, um, how, how did they know where to target? Right, and and you know, and, and honestly, uh, you know, how serious are they, uh, Sarah, about really targeting and trying to block these publishers? I mean, on the one hand, uh, you know, for every one you block, I'm sure there's ten more that sprout up, and on the uh, end as well, or maybe on the other hand, also, uh, it, it's going to cost a lot of money and resources for Facebook. Yeah, you make a really great point. Now, the company today had another announcement related to, uh, as you say, blocking publishers. Um, they are going to ban any sort of publishers that violate their standards, uh, post objectionable content or fake news, from putting advertising on those videos or in those articles. So Facebook is trying to take out the monetary incentive for spreading this kind of information on their platform. But like you said, it's whack-a-mole. You know, once you yeah. take someone down, they find out an another way to do it. It's very similar to the way that Facebook has had to deal with spam and hacking and clickbait in the past. You know, once you uh, set up a set of rules, uh, they find a way to get around them. Yeah, um, Sarah, tell us a bit more about this new kind of segment or, or, or section called Watch that they're going to be using for new ad opportunities. So uh, the reason that that's re relevant to what I just said, right now in your Facebook news feed, uh, the ads are separate from the content that your friends post or that websites post. In this new video effort that Facebook has rolled out called Watch, Actual video makers will be able to slot ads within uh, their their at, their uh, productions. So you might have seen that on your newsfeed already. A, a few seconds into whatever you're watching, a cake decorating video or uh, you know something about travel, there will be an ad break and and Facebook and the publisher of that video will be able to split revenue on that ad. So that's a very different advertising situation than what Facebook has had in the past. Um, and now they need to take responsibility for where those promotions end up, what kind of content they're posted alongside. They certainly don't want anything that is racist, objectionable, uh, or fake news to be ho hosting ads. Yeah, massive.